I used to, uh, I, I heard one time from someone that came to work, a, a young mom, and she said, you know, sometimes when you get to work, you just feel like people should clap because they have no idea what you've been through in order to get you to work. You know, babies have spit up or children have been dropped off or crock pots have been started and you finally walk in the door to work and you've already had a half a day and we should all have a standing ovation when we finally get to work and we've, we're, or we're all in one piece. Welcome to the Family Business Connection, a Prairie Family Business Association podcast, where we lift up the stories behind family businesses who thrive for generations. I'm your host, Stephanie Larshide. On Family Business Connection, we explore the topics our family business members request most often, communication, culture, innovation, leadership, strategy, and succession through hearing from the family business leaders who are solving problems day in and day out and building a legacy for their businesses and their families. In this episode, we welcome Mary Jo Miner, CEO of Mills Property Management, a property management company based in Brookings, South Dakota. In our conversation, we talk about the similarities and differences in Mary Jo's first to second generation transition, as well as her current generation two to generation three transition. We also discuss how she approaches being intentional about leading both her family and her family business through values, work ethic, and how they do business. Lastly, as we approach Mother's Day, Mary Jo and I talk about her passion of being the matriarch of her family business. Thanks for joining us in this episode of Family Business Connection. Before we get into my conversation with Mary Jo, here's a word from our sponsor, Ide Bailey. We want to say a big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Ide Bailey. I Bailey CPAs and business advisors help our families with tax consulting, business valuation, cybersecurity, data-driven decision-making, and so much more. I Bailey is a trusted partner of Prairie Family Business Association and a frequently referred advisor. I Bailey is a top 25 national CPA firm. Visit idbailey.com for more information. Welcome to our conversation with Mary Jo Miner, second generation of Mills Property Management. Welcome, Mary Jo. Thank you, Stephanie. It's good to see you and be here today. We're looking forward to today's conversation where we're really going to dive into values and the role of the matriarch in the family business, which I know you're especially passionate about. Well, I don't always consider myself a matriarch. That's a pretty big word, but I'm very passionate about our family and about our business. That is a fact. So let's talk about your transitions that you've experienced in the past and that you're currently in the midst of now. You've gone through a first to second generation transition years ago, and now you're in the midst of a second to third generation transition with you as the second generation owner and leader of Mills Property Management, how are these transitions executing differently? Yeah, I, they've been very different. You know, my dad was a entrepreneur in his own right. He developed um, property. He was a building contractor and a developer. And as he got to the place in his life where he was looking at, um, you know, sustainability and contingency plans. Um, my brother was involved in the company and um, I was just in the management side of things. And so as it turned out, you know, we ended up the success story for the first generation to second generation was because there were so many parts and pieces, we split into different companies. And so that was the way that first gen went to second gen. We each kind of got our own piece and took that. So now as a second generation uh, business owner, um, looking at the way my my dad um, planned well, but it was pretty much only from an estate accounting side of things, and it wasn't as much of a you know a three hundred and sixty um, view. So for the property management company, looking at what's the next generation need and how are we going to do that. Um, I think we're looking at a lot broader perspective and we're trying to pull in way more resources than just uh, the financial package and the stocks and the shares and things like that, looking at um, lots and lots of different parts and pieces to that. So we're we're um, 
just we're, you know, we're mentally and mentally and emotionally, I think we've already gotten through a lot of things in this generation two to, to next gen. Um, but for the business, we're still working on the transition plan for um, how the business is going to thrive in the next generation that will set it up for success for the fourth generation, hopefully, or, or whomever runs that business. So that's the goal. Let's make this a 50, 100 year old business. And that's what you're working so hard to do, which is what we're here to help you with through Prairie Family Business Association. Right. And we have been in business for over 30 years, so we're well on our way. So, well, congratulations on that. Business ownership and family business ownership is not easy, and it doesn't happen by accident. <sighs> it's very intentional. How are you transitioning things similar? What aspects of the G1 to G2 transition are you replicating in the G2 to G3? Oh, that's a good question. I think I'm replicating um, the communication, we, the meetings that are directly related to the transition, you know, the owners meetings. My dad was good about having family meetings um, to, to learn what the next thing, what the next steps looked like. Um, what we're doing in generation two to generation three is we've hired facilitator to help us through a uh, process to establish an advisory board with outside uh, board members. So um, that's something that my dad didn't do, but he was bringing in, in the same token, he was bringing in lots of outside resources to help our family get to the next the next step. So I think that's like a replication at the same time. We're doing it a little bit um, more refined, I guess. That role of the facilitator can be so essential. And I think it's especially unique that in your ownership and in your key management, you're all female. And yeah. that's a really yes, unique aspect are. of a family business. And it brings its own opportunities and challenges and rewards along with it. Yeah, and absolutely. Lots of great things. I love working with a lot of women. And we have some great men also on our team. Um, and it brings challenges. But I can say that um, we have just some great women that we get to work with. So it's been great. How about your values? How are you, Mary Jo, second generation leader and owner, how are you making sure that your own core values and the business's values get passed on to family and to your employees and your customers? How are you making sure that's happening? That's a great question. One of the things that I think that I've had to do is to be sure that I learned about myself first, that I have to understand who I am in all of the strengths and all of the weaknesses. And, you know, you can do that through um, all of the all of the character tests, personal is personal um, tests that you take, um, the Clifton strengths, the disc, all those things. So valuable to do those. And over the years, you need to continue to to review those and take new ones. So I think leading leading by learning about yourself first, so you know where your strengths are and you know where your weaknesses are. And then um, I have a I have a personal kind of coach on the side who helped me write down my own personal core values and so and then break those down into measurable things that I can look at and see if I'm following my own core values and in our company we've done very much the same thing we have our core values and then we have a mission statement and we use um, EOS systems to track all of our measurables to be sure that we're staying with those core values. And um, those things are so helpful because it takes the personal bias out of it as much as you can. And it also um, brings value to the every part and piece of the, of the process, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, kind of felt like I said that in a mush, but um, core values are, are not just words on a page, you have to make them apply every day. And so I think by using the EOS system and the way that I've broken down my personal core values into like 
how I spend my time looking at my calendar. The same thing with our company. You know, how are we dividing our staff? What are our job tasks? They have to line up with the core values and our mission. And, um, and they, and, and then we have to make decisions based on that. So at Mills Property Management, one of our, our, um, mission statement things is that we provide homes to enjoy. And, um, those are things that we can measure, you know, in lots of ways. And we go back to our core values, one of our strongest core values, which would be coming from my personal side, as well as our companies that, um, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christ follower. And so we have faith-based foundation as one of our company, uh, core values. And, um, that's a personal thing and we don't push that on anyone, but we definitely do business from that perspective. And, uh, those are just very highly important to me. You're fulfilling some basic needs of human life when you talk about the the need for shelter, the need for home, the need for the fulfilling the soul, all of that. And that has to be extremely rewarding to show up each day and know this is our mission. This is what we're setting out to do. Right. And I think it's rewarding for our whole team to know that every day we make a difference um, by the way that we approach people. And one of my, one of my core strengths, like if you take the Clifton strengths is relationships and connecting. And so that all really plays well into providing homes for people to enjoy and services to envy and great places to work. Um, I'm all about the relationships. And, um, so we have a great culture that makes everything about those relationships because, life is short. And being a second generation who feels like I just got here into the leadership role and already uh, my age is catching up with me and I need to transition to the third generation, you realize that life is short. And the, really the only thing we get to leave behind are those relationships and, um, and the impact and the influence we have on people, whether it's at work or in our families. So, Very much so. Now, you set us up that in the beginning that you and your siblings each took your own business unit and and went and ran, ran with that and have have gone down those business paths and now you and your husband have four children and you have um, no direct children in the business day to day you do have one child in ownership you have a daughter-in-law who is in ownership and a key employee and then you have a non-family member who's a key leader and impl- our owner of the business as well so you have two children with some pretty direct influence on the business and two children not with direct influence on the business. You're starting to innovate and create your own family's venture. Tell us about that. Yes. Well, we have, um, my husband is also on the ag side of things. So we have a whole nother show there in the future, perhaps. But um, we have created a real estate portfolio um, in a partnership so that, um, you know, Mills Property Management primarily now is going forward manages real estate investments for other people. The company doesn't own any of the properties that we manage. We are a third party management company and um, excel at what we do there. But on my personal side, have some personal real estate holdings that we have formed a um, limited liability, limited partnership. And we put several properties into that partnership and we've begun to have family meetings with the um, vested, engaged, involved, um, my daughter-in-law and my daughter and, and our four children and their spouses come to those family meetings. And we primarily have been just talking about the real estate partnership in order to help facilitate an understanding of some of the business things that our kids will need to know going forward. Um, and the, and we have just have a new project going right now, which I'm really excited about, called Trails Head in Brookings. And it's a mixed use building with some commercial and some townhomes and a, a really big uh, community gathering green space that um, hopefully will fulfill what our family is about as far as connecting with people and having deep relationships and and having time and a place to go as a a friends and family, I guess, that makes 
any sense. <laughs> and when you think about where you are in life and business, how does that feel to be creating this new avenue for for your you, your spouse, your four children, your grandchildren? You know, I don't think I spend a lot of time thinking those like grand thoughts about what we're creating in the big scale. I had a piece of property that I, um, through my parents, uh, my sister and I ended up with, I bought her out of this wonderful location. My dad taught me many, many valuable principles in life. And one of them was, if you have a great location, you never sell it. You you hang on to that location and you develop it. So this three acre parcel that we're developing now is one of those great locations in Brookings that we are developing and want to continue to try to pass on some of those um, great business legacy principles that I learned from my dad. Um, two of which would be the first one, if you have a great location and you are in real estate, you don't sell it. You you hang on to that and let it feed feed you through the years and let it add to your community and add to your city. And the second one my dad just instilled in me, which I probably should have mentioned sooner, and we put it on the wall of our office at Mills Property Management, is if you can learn to work with people, you can do anything. And in my naive, young self, that sounded so easy. If you can learn to work with people, you can do anything. Well, I'm kind of an extrovert and I love people, so it sounded really easy, but it's a lifelong a lesson and journey that I'm on to learn to work with people. So through all those things being said, those three acres being developed in the mixed use is uh, just kind of a, a fun thing that I feel challenged still from my dad to carry out and see what we can develop and see how we can learn to work with people. And there's so many layers of people that you get to work with and the architects and consultants and engineers, and then there'll be tenants and commercial tenants. And, and then our family, you know, there's a lot of layers of people in that, so. You're creating, and you're creating something of meaning for your own branch of your family tree. And we're excited yeah. to watch that come to fruition. Well, we hope so. <laughs> Talk about how other family businesses have influenced and shaped your journey along the way. You know, I think I told you ahead of this that I could probably spend an hour just talking about this because um, we've been involved with Prairie Family Business for, I don't know, so many years and went to some of the very first conferences where there was, you know, small people, but so engaging to visit with people that were so transparent about their businesses and their transitions and hearing the success stories and hearing the struggles and hearing those things over the years. Um, Help me to understand that no one business has all the answers and there's no one recipe for success, that there's all kinds of there's all kinds of definitions for success and every family has to look at who you are for yourself. And so being involved in the Prairie Family Business and all the resources that they brought, that they bring, continue to bring, um, continues to shape us. I think just setting up this advisory board with outside expertise is just still shaping us and we're utilizing resources that we've become aware of through Prairie Family Business and just the, the friendships and the, the long-term trust and relationships that we have with other business owners, even if they're in totally different businesses, um, the concepts and the principles are still the same and the respect and the trust um, is just outstanding. And I just couldn't say enough about surrounding yourself with good people, you know, how you should always surround yourself with the best people and knowing who you are and knowing you don't have what it takes within yourself sometimes if you surround yourself with the right people. And um, we've been able to do that so many times and continue to do that through Prairie Family Business Association. And your peer group certainly has been one of those great influences and impacts on your life that you've been in for more than a decade. Yep. I'm in an affinity peer group that um, I think I would call some of my, <clears throat> I wouldn't, they are my most trusted business advisors that I have right now. <clears throat> They're the other business leaders in my affinity peer group. And 
we have, excuse me, <coughs> we reach out to each other in between. We hold each other accountable. Uh, we're each other's cheerleaders. Um, each one that the group understands that we have seasons, even seasons within seasons sometimes. And um, it's just so encouraging. I think one of the things I look forward to the most is the next affinity group meeting that we're going to have. <laughs> so, um, and, and it's taken time to develop that. It wasn't, you know, it doesn't just happen by just signing up to be in a group. This is my plug. It takes commitment and it takes trust and it takes being vulnerable and it takes the confidentiality that we have at our meetings. So I just can't say enough about that. It's such an important piece and you don't have to go it alone. Business ownership and family business ownership can feel lonely. And when you can be around people who are in a really similar position to you and can help walk you through, hold you accountable, give you, expose you to new ways of, of having conversations or, or operating your business, all the more valuable for you and future generations. So I'm really happy that that's been a big piece of your journey as well. And you've influenced those fellow peer group members too. As this podcast episode launches, we're approaching Mother's Day. And we're going to talk a bit about the role of the matriarch in the family business, which you certainly are, Mary Jo. And when you think about your roles, you have so many roles. You are mom, you are mother-in-law, you are grandma, you are, you've been daughter, sister, we call you CFO in addition to CEO, CFO being the chief family organizer, the one who keeps things moving forward. It's a lot. You carry a lot of weight on your shoulders. What does that mean to you and, and how do you handle it? I was feeling pretty good about it until you said it like that. <laughs> no, um, I think I don't, I, it's, you know, everybody doesn't do things perfectly, but I think having my own core values written down, having my own goals in mind, and then looking at my calendar for what my role is in that day and that hour helps me to know if I'm staying balanced at all. I think as women and moms, I used to say this with the people that we would hire, uh, the women especially, you know, there's no such thing as a balanced work and family life because there's sometimes you just have to be more mom than you have to be CEO. And sometimes you have to be more CEO than you can be mom or wife or... So I think the goal is to try to make the the out of balance as little as little differential as possible and just let your family and your business know that you're both you're both a business woman and you're a family mom wife sister whatever so by having my own personal goals i have them broken down into what does it mean for me what's important to me and my family and how am i going to show my family those things um and then measure and measure them like are we having large group family gatherings and what's the goal? Three times a year, once a month? Am I doing individual touches with my grandchildren and what does that look like? And have I, am I, you know, you have to evaluate yourself in those things. I think right now in the stage where I'm at at work, it's a little harder for me to, to measure if I'm doing it right as I'm trying to trans. I'm transitioning out and sometimes I feel like I've stepped out too fast and I've abandoned ship. And sometimes when I try to check back in, I get the feeling that, no, we, we don't need you. We're fine. So I'm looking forward to the, the advisory board to help us kind of um, bridge that gap that I'm not sure about in the, in the, in the family, in the business side of things. Um, you know, our, our society and our economy is so based on families. And if you can have a stable family, and that's what we do at work is provide homes for people. I just think that we have to continue to encourage women in their families and in their businesses. Um, and it's never going to look perfect ever. <laughs> it's a dance. And you're 
constantly figuring out what that dance looks like and what is working best for your family and your business. And that's what we're here to support you in as well. And, and the other family business owners and leaders and matriarchs who are in a very similar position to you. We're figuring it out along the way. I used to, uh, I, I heard one time from someone that came to work, a, a young mom, and she said, you know, sometimes when you get to work, you just feel like people should clap because they have no idea what you've been through in order to get you to work. You know, babies have spit up or children have been dropped off or crock pots have been started and you finally walk in the door to work and you've already had a half a day and we should all have a standing ovation when we finally get to work and we've, we're are we're all in one piece, so. <laughs> I completely agree with that, Mary Jo. <laughs> it's a great reflection. Well, we've reached the part in the episode where we're gonna talk about the family business five, and we have five key questions that we ask all of our podcast guests. So to kick us off, what is a book that has greatly influenced you? Well, you know, the the book that influences my whole life has been the Bible. And recently I have started a new journey called the Bible Recap, where you're reading through the Bible as the story. It's God's story. And I'm I'm in Exodus right now, and um, that's that continues to influence me the most. Um, a recent, and I love leadership books, so I'm going to add another one. I've read a ton of them, but I looked back, and one that recently has been quite impactful is called Leading with a Limp by Dan Allender. And so I would highly recommend that as a book also. I'll have to check that one out. That's a new one for me. Through your involvement with Prairie Family Business Association, what program or experience has provided you the most value? Uh, hands down, my peer affinity group. Easy answer. <laughs> and and because we and because we have a great facilitator, so who really pulls it out of us, keeps us on track. So it's good. I think your peer group would very similar response that you've influenced them as well. <laughs> Looking back on your family business, what do you most attribute your success to or what are you most proud of? Um, you know, I think that I've understood all along that I was in way over my head and that this was nothing that was going to come just because of any good looks or good works or educational background. Um, so I think I attribute it really to God's hand of blessing and being honest to know that I didn't have all the answers and bringing in people all along the way. You know, we've used facilitators and we've reached out over and over to um, many different resources. So I, to attribute your success to, it's just, uh, it's everything's in God's hands and we're just the stewards, you know, we just are here for a little while and so I just have to say thank you, Lord. He's been very gracious and blessed us well. I think that's an extension of your family values, too, that have certainly been passed to you by your parents and you're passing to your next generation as well. Who's someone from outside your family business who's been instrumental to your success? That one is easy also. Uh, that would be Keith Severson. He was my dad's accountant when we went from Gen 1 to Gen 2. He became our company accountant. And um, as I said in my previous answer, I kind of knew I was in over my head. And uh, he was just so much more than just our accountant. He was my business coach. I would call him when I was worried. I was scared. I didn't know how to handle the next bigger thing, you know, as we scaled up in management and outside owners. And he he always believed in me and he always um, had time for me. He never made me feel inadequate and I just uh, I have to give him so much credit so I know I've heard you credit Keith in the past and it when you find that advisor who fits so well and that trust and that partnership is there uh, it's not a business transaction it's hey we're both trying to help each other out here and, and make the right decisions and figure things out that can be so valuable to your business and to yourself as a leader What's a, f a lesson sure. learned from a family member that's really stuck out to you? You've listed several gems already, Mary Jo, but what's one you'd really hone in on? I think the one that 
uh, that I've already said, but it, it continues through your whole life. If you can learn to work with people, you can do anything. Um, so it's, again, it sounds pretty easy, but you know, you can meet people and then there's some kind of people and then there's other kinds of people. So if you can learn to work with people in a positive way, um, and with respect and, and, uh, not take offense. I think that's a big thing. So if you can learn to work with people, you can do anything. That is a gem from my dad. It's very, very true. It all boils down to people and communication, which is something we talk about so much at Prairie Family Business Association. Well, thank you so much for this conversation and for sharing the role of the matriarch, how you're transitioning those values, how you're creating innovation in your next generation, and you're executing that transition that is probably never done, but is always in process. And you keep up the great work on the progress you're making. Thank you, Stephanie. And on that note, we've reached the end of the episode. Thank you to Mary Jo for sharing her passion vision, and values in leading her family business. As you heard Mary Jo articulate, it takes intentional hard work to commit to your values to lead not only your business, but also to lead your family. Do you want to learn what key areas your family business should focus on next? Take the Family Business Checkup. After answering several prompts, the Family Business Checkup will give you scores on the key indicators of family business success and point you in the right direction for what you should focus on next. The checkup is free and available at our website, fambus.org slash resources, or at the link in the show notes. Thanks again for joining us today. Our inaugural season of the Family Business Connection will be 10 episodes featuring stories of all kinds of family business leaders. Be sure to follow or subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you.